Welcome. I am Sister Who. With me today is Jean Parker. And Jean, you grew up in uh, the New England area of the United States. Right. But now you're teaching at a prestigious university in India. Mm -hmm. And so we're obviously, like all of our shows, we're only going to scratch the surface, but there's um, some interesting things I'm sure you could share with us about uh, the differences. Uh, because now you're teaching at this uh, prestigious university in India, so you've been uh, a woman in American society, and now you're a woman in Indian society. And you've traveled other places as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the broader subject that we're looking at today is, is gender and how the roles and the responsibilities shift uh, around the global community that humanity is becoming. Where would be a good place to start in, in addressing that? Um, goodness. I, it's a very broad subject, I understand. Yeah, it's also a, a kind of a volatile subject. Okay. Um, what makes it volatile? Well, there are places in the world where there's a tremendous gender disparity. And what I mean by that is that there are uh, many more males than females. In just basic numbers. Right. Okay. And so what you find out of course, is that um, because of medical advancement, people are able to know ahead of time the gender of the fetus okay. and get rid of it. And if it's not what they want, if it's not what they want, which is is usually in many societies, is uh, almost almost always the female. Fetus. The female is is not desirable, right? And the male is because. The male is. The world, at least in the present time, is predominantly patriarchal. Yeah, because the, the reasoning goes that um, the male will uh, grow up, earn a living, and be able to take care of his parents. The girl in these societies is a liability because the parents will have to pay for her dowry. Okay. And will have to... Um, which perhaps the majority of the world's cultures still associate uh, marriage with paying a, a dowry along with a bride. A lot do. Okay. Even though it's illegal in a lot of countries. Actually illegal. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's still uh, it's still practiced throughout many societies. And there used to be a sign that was around in India that said. Uh, pay some certain amount of money now for um, the medical test to determine gender and then the subsequent surgery that would <laughs> eliminate that fetus okay. and save many thousands of rupees later. Meaning if it was a female fetus you wouldn't be paying the dowry. Right. So they're actually using that as a marketing yes. uh, characteristic. They did. They mm. don't they, I haven't heard about many of those signs recently. There have been some convictions recently of uh, doctors who have done sex determination tests okay. and then offered the, um, the subsequent abortions based on gender. So, so that's in that combination. It's gone way underground now. <laughs> but that combination is illegal in both the U.S. and India, or...? Um, it's illegal in India okay. to do sex determination. It's still done. Okay. Yeah. I mean, usually when you put a law like that, then the thing goes underground. Okay. People still do it, but... Here in the U.S., it would not be, it would not be illegal. Um, but it would, it perhaps would be really difficult to track. Right. I think it would be difficult to track. Okay. Yeah. And it's difficult to track in any country because... It's not something that, that people will readily admit to doing. But mm. tell me why um, we keep seeing articles in the newspapers about um, fetuses that are dug up by packs of dogs outside of medical clinics in India, mm. and they're female. All of them? Yes. Okay. Which adds a whole nother wrinkle to the whole uh, abortion question. Mm -hmm. um, selective abortion, if you will. Uh, I mean, to me, the whole 
uh, business of uh, the whole discussion of abortion uh, to me. Because I want to favor one's individual choice, I usually uh, argue in favor of preventing the, the pregnancy you don't mm -hmm. want. Yeah. Um, yeah, prevention is, of course, the My understanding is that idea. there are medical uh, procedures now by which you can create a gender predisposition prior to conception. Now, that is something I haven't heard about. Okay, but then maybe it's just a rumor that I heard. <laughs> Some, Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe, somebody, it maybe once, it's somebody's so wishful thinking. <laughs> I, I heard somebody mention it to me once. I never investigated, so... You know, don't anybody quote me. I have no idea if it really is there, but there was some procedure someone suggested to me once by which they would do some process to the male sperm that was supposed to uh, somehow uh, filter between the the gender predisposition. Increase the X's or something. Uh, increase the X's or Y's or, or whichever. Whatever it was, um, yeah. That um, I, I don't know. And... You know, science gives us all kinds of things to debate about. Mm -hmm. 